the dimensions of God's love. So what does dimension mean? What does dimension mean? I'll take two definitions. There are so many definitions, but I'll just take two, and then we'll dwell on that. Firstly, dimension means size or magnitude, the size or a magnitude of something. In other words, the measurement of something in particular, in a particular direction. So we are saying the dimension of something, you are talking about the size, how big is it? You know, um, what's the magnitude of it? Um, can, you, can you measure it? Can you measure it? Can you know the totality of this thing? So that is the meaning of dimension. So based on that definition, let's look at the size and magnitude of God's love. Since that's the love that we are talking about today. Um, let's open to the book of Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, and we'll start from verse 17. It says, That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to do what? Comprehend with all saints. What is what? The breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Praise the Lord. All right. So in that um, verse, we can see the dimensions of God's love in, in a picture being painted out for us. Um, it says the length, the depth, the height, you know, and the breadth of God's love. So that was an attempt to measure, you know, how God's love, you know, is. So let's talk about length. Let's talk about the length, the length of God's love. You know, length is talking about how long, how long something is, you know, the distance, um, distance from point A to point B. You know, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Um, message says to test the length of God's love. So in other words, I would like to ask us in the house, how far can your love go? How far can your love go? How far can your love go? What is the limit of your love? This God who we are, we are made in his image and likeness, he's someone who has a limitless and matchless love. So if you are made in his image and his likeness, ask yourself this question, how far can your love go? How far reaching can your love go? What is the limit of your love? What is the limit of your love? You don't need to answer. It's a rhetorical question. So you can write it down and ask yourself, what is the limit of your love? How enduring is your love? Can your love be stretched? Can your love be stretched? Can your love be stretched? In Matthew, Peter was asking Jesus, how many times should someone offend me before I react? was saying, should it be seven times? Jesus said, no, it's 70 times seven. Now, that does not mean after the 490th time you can take action. What Jesus was trying to talk about is that there should be no limit. There should be no limit to how far you can go to love your neighbor. Ask your neighbor by your side. Ask them, how far can your love go? All right. So the next one is the breath, the breath, the breath of God's love. When you say breath, you are talking about how wide something is. How wide something is, you know. Um, how far reaching, how far reaching God's love is. You know, the coverage, the coverage of God's love. So how far reaching is God's love before we even talk about ourselves? John 3.16 says what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that whosoever. So I would like to ask you this. What is the coverage of your love? How inclusive is your love? How accommodating is your love? Are you, are you someone who discriminates people based on their tribe? Are you someone who, I know we don't have those kind of people in the house, but there may be some online. So, <laughs> so are you someone who discriminates people based on how they appear or how they dress? How far reaching is your love? What is the coverage? of your love. Our love is supposed to be all inclusive. God loves each and every one of us. So if we are like God and we are created in his image, we must love every one. So ask someone by your side, ask them how far reaching is your love? Ask them again, say what is the coverage of your love? All right. 
All right, so um, next is the depth. The depth of God's love. The depth of God's love. Okay, so what does depth mean? Of course, we know depth means, you know, to, um, how deep, how deep something is. You know, how deep something is. Message, translation says that we should plumb the depth. We should plumb the depths of God's love. Um, and that deepness talks about intensity. It talks about intensity. It talks about intensity. You know, what is the intensity of your love? You know, first of all, we even ask ourselves, how, how intense is God's love for us? You know, again from John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave himself. He gave his most prized, most prized possession. He gave his life. He, he left the glory in heaven you know, to come and dwell with us and die for our sins. So that was the extent God was willing, was willing to go, you know, to save us from our sins. So God's love is so intense. God's love is so intense. So, so in that same vein, I would like to ask us, how intense is your love? How, how, how far are you willing to stretch yourself, you know, to show that you love, to show, to show God's love to your brothers and your sisters and those around you? You know, he loved us even while we were deep in sin. While we were deep in sin, his love, his love went down, you know, and pulled us out and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. So how deep is your love? Ask your neighbor by his side, how deep is your love? All right. So lastly, um, it says the height of God's love. That's in verse we read. It also talks about the height of God's love. And um, briefly, height means, you know, to know how, high or lofty um, something is you know so just like God's love God's love is far above human weakness it's far above our human weakness it's far above our frailties you know this is the God the God that we serve is someone who created time and stepped out of time he exists out of time so he has seen our lives from the beginning to the end he knows all the mistakes we are going to make he knows all the right and wrong decisions that we are going to make and because he's far above that you know, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do to condescend his love for us. So, that is all about um, the height of God's love. Okay, so that does it about the size and magnitude, you know, of God's love. To give us a, a understanding, you know, of how big or how large God's love is. Alright, so the second definition, the second definition of dimension the second definition of dimension talks about aspects, the aspect of something, the aspect of something or the size of a thing, the size of a thing. Let me, let me quickly read it here. Okay, it says, an aspect of future of a situation, the single aspect of a thing, of a given thing. Yeah, so um, like a box, a box has many sides or many aspects. So when you want to know the aspects of a thing, it means you want to get information about that thing in different sites or in this world, in different dimensions. And how do you do that? You get information by asking questions. By asking questions. That's how you draw information. All right. So and um, the major questions we ask um, in the English language which you use is the WH questions. That's the who, the what, the why, the where, when, and so on and so forth. So, I would like to ask this question. We'll be looking at a particular aspect or dimension of God's love. And that is the question of why. That is the question of why. Why? Why does God love me? Why does God love me? Why does God love me? Okay, so I was, I was thinking about this um, throughout this week. Why does God love me? And um, it was really difficult for me to get an answer. <laughs> I must confess, it was difficult for me to get an answer until I stumbled on an explanation by Miles Monroe. Many of us will know him, um, a famous uh, preacher and um, author and, and thought leader. So I saw a video about, about this question and I would like to share it with us today. Um, he shared a story. He shared a story of... Um, Two people, uh, two people who are in a um, kind of a, in, their, in a relationship, like a marriage, you know, or just friends talking to each other. And you know, one person, he gave the instance of one person always professing their love. You know, I love you, I love you, you are this, you are that. And then after a while, the second partner asked, why? 
Okay, you love me, you love me, you love me so much. Why do you love me? Why do you love me? And then as humans, we now be, go ahead to give them reasons. I love you because you are beautiful. I love you because I love the way you smile. I love it when you sing. I love, it, I love, I love you when you dress well, you know. And um, he, says, he said one thing. He said, um, when you give love a reason, you have killed that love. When you give love a reason, you have killed that love. So if anyone tells you why they love you, somehow they have killed that love. And why is that? Because when you introduce a reason to why you love something or someone, you have created what is called a condition. You have created what is called a condition. Now, what does that mean? That means the person must always strive to attain that condition. If they don't meet it, then the love is no more there. Now, imagine if God told us why he loved us. Imagine if there was a reason why God loved us. If there was that reason, what do you think our Christian life is going to be like? Every day we'll always be striving and struggling to make sure that we attain, we attain this reason, this condition that he has given us. You know, if not, we will fall out of his love. Then in the end, he went on ahead to give the final conclusion, which says, God's love has no reason. It is unconditional. Please, you can write that down. God's love has no reason. It is unconditional. God's love has no reason. It is unconditional. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and cravings for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstance, and with that you have. For he, God, he himself has said... Now, this is the part of the Bible that we all know that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, let's see what the Amplified says. God himself said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not in any degree leave you helpless or forsake you. I will not let you down. I will not relax my hold on you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. So this, this is the kind of love we are enjoying as Christians. You know, it's not, it's not our fault. God has decided in his infinite mercies to love us, to love us just because he is love, just because that is who he is. So God's love is something that you cannot escape from. You cannot, he has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. So it's not even dependent on you at all. It's not even dependent on you at all. You've messed up, yes. You've made a few mistakes, yes. You know, sometimes evil thoughts come into your mind, yes. You know, you are not perfect, yes. You've not gotten there, yes. But God has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He has, he has gone ahead of time, you know, and seen the mistakes that you will make. He said he has provided everything that we will need for life and godliness so everything you ever need in life has been prepared beforehand as we as we talk about the dimensions of god's love this is one of the things i want to leave with us i want us to live with today that god's love will never leave you nor forsake you you cannot escape god's love his love is infinite his love is not something you can totally measure his love is endless his love is unconditional his love is far-reaching his love is deep his love is deep. His love is deep. First John 4, 7 and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for God is of love, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. For God is love. So here, there is a connection between love and, between God's love and knowing what God's love is all about. There's a connection between knowing between God's love and knowing what, God, what his love is all about. So as Ifani said in the um, first word session, he said, you cannot give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. In Pigeon, they say, if he didn't day, he didn't day. Yes. So um, when, when we begin to understand, when we begin to understand and practice 
and practice what God's love is all about, we now begin to experience the fullness of God. We now begin to, as we receive and understand what God's love is in our lives, we begin to begin to um, receive the fullness of his love in our lives. And as we do that, from that fullness we have received, we now pour out to those around you. Please make sure that before you begin to express love, go to the Lord first in prayer and ask him to reveal to you how deep he loves you. Because if your cup is half full and you begin to pour out, eventually you will get tired, you will get frustrated. So ask the Lord and receive of the fullness of God first and then begin to pour God's love to the rest of the world. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and thank the Lord. Just thank the Lord for his love. He has said he will never leave us nor forsake us. His love is unconditional. His love is far-reaching. We don't, we don't need to strive. We don't need, we don't need to worry. We don't need to be frustrated that we have not attained yet. We can just continue to press on. We can continue to press on because we know that he loves us. Lord, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you, Lord, because even, even with the mistakes we've made and the mistakes that we will make in the future, you have stamped us, oh Lord, as, as, your, as your beloved son, as your beloved daughter. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your love upon our lives. We give you glory and we appreciate, oh God, that you, 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 you demonstrated your love by giving your only son to die for us. Lord, we do not take it for granted. We accept the gift of Jesus. We accept your love for us, oh God. And we promise that from today, we will be an extension of God to our world. In Jesus' name, we've prayed.